Well, we all have our own bucket list, don't we? And while we've been blessed and fortunate enough to do some amazing things, typically around the sports world, I checked off another box today as I got to meet someone who I think is a top 10 singer of all time. Oh. As we discussed a few weeks ago, the great Pink was in the building today, and I got to spend some quality time with her and a checkbox. Were you, Thank you, sir. Were you starstruck? No, but... Uh, no nerves at all. No. i tell you what I did, though. Wow. So I FaceTimed a family member mm -hmm. uh, who's a big fan of Pink, and uh, even let them talk to each other. Oh, so you not only met Pink, but you had Pink <laughs> FaceTiming yeah. your family? I had Pink FaceTiming my family. <laughs> I'm sure she loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's a big fan of mine, too. She told me, she goes, every day I'm in New York, it's Carton and Roberts. <laughs> Carton and Roberts, Carton and Roberts every single day. And uh, she even said, look, I take credit for the Eagles Super Bowl a few years back. Because oh, I did the anthem for it. Ah. Ah. And she's an Eagle fan, isn't big she? Big Eagle fan. Big, wow. big, 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 big Eagle fan. I give fan. you credit. You don't even have to pretend to like her. Because literally like a week ago on the air, right. you were arguing with me about how popular she was. Yes. And you were proven right, by the way. Yep. Just looking at how hot her ticket sales uh, are. She's playing City Field, too, by the way. I know. And at City Field, to like yep. get in and see her in concert, like the yeah. get-in price yeah. is 250 Something absurd. It's it's crazy. No, she's uh, she's that good at what she does. Well, good for her and good for yes, you. Yes, and I'll be seeing her at City Field as well, yeah. and I'll be seeing her at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I'm sure you are. I may go on tour with her, <laughs> and just wherever she is, I'm just going to go pop, 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 pop. So you're like yeah. one of those weird Springsteen fans who follow him to every city no, and I, every not concert? Yet, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm giving it a lot of consideration. I'll tell you that right now. Um, anyhow, good to be here. Good to have you here. I know for a lot of you, it's, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Has he shown his head yet? Has he popped out <laughs> of the darkness retreat yet? Has he decided he wants to be a Jet? And to be fair, as much as we may all be tired of talking about it and hearing about it, it would be such a transformative moment in New York Jet history that has not been in any way, shape, or form been presented to us as that's not on the table. You kind of have to play this game and this dance now, waiting and hoping that when Aaron Rodgers comes out of his retreat, that he has had the epiphany that, A, he wants to be traded because there are those in Green Bay that don't believe that's happening. And then, B, he wants to play for the New York Jets. So as much as I'm sick and tired of talking about it, I'm sure you are to a certain extent as well, it would be such a major moment in the franchise's history it's something that we got to discuss until we find out he is or he isn't. I, I think what's frustrating is that, you know, we're kind of getting teased a little bit. Sure. Because a few days ago, there was this very respected Packer reporter who said the Packers are done with him. They can't wait to get rid of him. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I checked the first box. Like, right. you checked the pink box? Yes. I'm checking the Green Bay is done with Aaron Rodgers box. And then today, there's another well-respected reporter, Tom Pelissero, who says... I haven't heard any of that. The Packers love Aaron Rodgers. Sure. They'd love for him to come back because that's the key to all of this. Aaron's going to play football. I think we all accept that. He's not retiring. He's not walking away from 50 plus million dollars. But then it comes down to the marriage. Do both sides want the marriage to last or are they ready to divorce each other? And that's like the first domino you need to have fall. You need the Packers to be done with this guy. You need Rodgers to be done with them. If that happens... The Jets are in the mode. They're in the playing field. They got a shot. Yeah. But now you kind of get this Green Bay hates them. Oh, wait, no, they don't. And that's a little frustrating. Well, I, I think that is frustrating. I do think that there's a part of that, which I have long uh, ranted against, as you're aware, that there are people in the media that want the story to be about them. And I'm not talking about talk shows who are paid to have an opinion and entertain and all that stuff, but people that cover the teams who now figure – if I put something out there and I'm lucky and I get it right, I stand out from the crowd. And I, I, I'm with you in that because two days ago, a 30-year reporter of the Green Bay Packers said, and I'm quoting now, the Packers are disgusted mm -hmm. by him. That was the quote. Yes. No, no. And they are ready to move on. Yeah. And now you have a guy who is a well-respected uh, reporter in Tom Pelissero for NFL Network, if I'm not mistaken, who goes, I never heard that. Like, right. I talked to the Packers front office or some people in the organization, and they'd love to have Aaron Rodgers back. And here's the rub on that. 
Whether the, he's a pain in the ass or not, he probably is. A lot of successful people are high maintenance pain in the asses, and you put up with them because they're just that good at what they do. Yes, Craig. There's a lot of really successful yes, right? people right. that are pains in the asses. Yeah, right. I can't think of one. Oh, I can think of a lot of people <laughs> in our industry as well. <laughs> Me who too. Who are successful, high maintenance pain in the ass people. <laughs> Anyone come to mind? Yeah, you want to say the name on the count of three? One, One two, two, three. three. Craig Carton. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Me. <laughs> I'm the most, most low-maintenance star you guys have ever met in your lifetime. Oh, yes, very yeah, low Yeah, you should be grateful in all your lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 too funny. Anyway, uh, so I get that aspect of it. But again, you know, the Green Bay Packers are a unique situation in that there's no owner. Right? There's no uh, guy who's like, I'm a multi-billionaire. I own the Packers. I'm going to dictate what happens here. It's a bit of a collective in that regard. And what's interesting about it is if the goal is still to win championships, and I'd like to believe Green Bay still has that as a primary goal, we've talked about it so many times on this show, the road to at least a championship game and then a potential Super Bowl appearance, and easy is not the right word, but I'm going to use it, is far easier in the NFC than the AFC. So if I look at it twofold. From the Packers standpoint, I might think Jordan Love is the second coming or the third coming now. Favre, Rogers, Love. I don't know if they're right or wrong on that, but they may feel that way. Okay, fine. But the flip side of that is if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I know I've got two, three, maybe four healthy, productive years left in the NFL for my storybook career, uh, which is a first bout Hall of Fame career, why would I want to go to the AFC where even if I play my ass off, the odds of getting to a Super Bowl are astronomically worse right. than they are in the NFC? And that's the part that I've always troubled with. Not that he wouldn't want to play for the Jets right, right. because the Jets do offer a lot. The road is tougher with the Jets. And, I if, get that. and it's not like you're 28 and you're making that decision. You're in your mid-30s. It's almost over. Yeah. And that's the rub here where I, I don't think he's leaving. So the assumption I've always made about this is that when Kuntz Kuntz and Aaron Rodgers had their hand-shaken deal a while back, the deal was, Aaron, if you're done with us, we will allow you to be done with us. We will help you find a new location. But we're not trading you inside the NFC. Right, we're which not, apparently is the understood agreement Right, and, and I understand that. So I think it's almost just a part of the deal that – if you want to leave this place, and I could see why he'd be done with this place. He's been there for a very long time. And last year, he was frustrated. He was honest about how frustrated he was with the youth of the wide receivers, with the lack of investment they've had on improving the skill position around him. Whether you agree with him or not, that's not the point. He was frustrated by that. So I think Aaron would look at greener pastures like Vegas, where he could play with an elite-level wide receiver he's close with, or play with the Jets with all the talent they have, not only on offense but defense, and say, yeah, I could beat those other elite-level quarterbacks. I'm not sure a competitor, a Hall of Famer, views the competition the way we do. We look at it as sports fans, and we analyze and say, well, the Bills are good, the Chargers are this, the Chiefs are that. You think Aaron Rodgers thinks that? Aaron Rodgers probably looks at these other quarterbacks and says, yeah, I'm the two-time COVID MVP. They should be scared of me. I'm not going to be scared of them. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's just it's fascinating that one guy who uh, loves the attention, in my opinion, is uh, holding a couple franchises hostage right now until he uh, has this inward moment with himself to decide what he wants to do. Now, look, Green Bay can always say no, but I don't think they're going to. I think if he says I'm out, they will trade him. Yeah, I'm under the impression I think we're on the same page if on that. one of the two sides wants out, it's over. Like, I don't think we're going to have a hostage situation where Rodgers wants out, the Packers say no, or vice versa, where the Packers say we're done with you and Rodgers says, well, I ain't going anywhere. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. I think if one of the two parties wants to break up, they're going to break up. Kind of like yes. a real couple. Yeah, but, not, but I think it's more the handshake agreement from a year ago uh, is what's in play, where if mm -hmm. he does come to them and say, listen, I've given it a lot of thought. I've uh, looked inside myself. I've had my retreat. And I just want a new challenge that's outside of Green Bay. It does seem like they will honor that. Yes. And then it comes down to, yeah, it's Vegas or it's here outside. Maybe it's Tennessee. But I think it's New York or Vegas. And we kind of have agreed as fans 
that were willing to be held hostage because he's just that good. And, and I think the Jets have agreed because what's Seems been clear like it, over the— Seems like it because they can sign Derek Carr today. I, I think the Jets are taking the approach I'd have, which is we have a list. We have a list. Number one on that list is Aaron Rodgers. Number two on that list is Derek Carr. Yep. I don't know where Lamar Jackson falls in all this, so let's put him to the side right now because it's a lot more complicated with the franchise tag. Would they actually trade him? So put that to the side. But the Jets have a list the way I have a list, the way you have a list, the way all of us dopey fans have our own little lists. And I think the list is the same as mine, which is Aaron Rodgers is number one. He's the Hall of Fame quarterback that gives them the best chance to win a championship immediately. And number two on that list is Derek Carr, who they're selling him on. Hey, Derek. You come here and win, you're a first ballot yeah, Hall of Famer. that's uh, an erroneous report. That's Diana Rossini. It's an erroneous report. She's saying that you're saying that's not true? That's not true. There's no, I'm not saying that there's not a low-level assistant to an assistant ball boy who was like, hey, you know what would be so cool? <laughs> he comes here and uh, play, you know, makes the playoffs five straight years, wins the Super Bowl. He's a first ballot Wait, Hall of so Famer. Wait, so you don't think? I can tell you it's a fact that Joe Douglas never told uh, Derek Carr, Come here and win, and you'll be a first battle all By the way, and the notion that that's out there is comical. Yeah, but I wouldn't look at the, the the nature of that statement and analyze it. I would just simply say they're recruiting a player. Are they not? Like when you're out to dinner yes. with a player, you're recruiting a player. Correct. Okay, so we agree they're recruiting. Isn't that a very recruiting kind of no. sentence for a high school kid going to college? Sure. Or even an NFL Come player. Come here, you'll be an All Big Ten rock star. No, no, you don't think when that you're work- recruiting guys been in the league for nine years, has made over a hundred million dollars and is now looking for his final resting place as an NFL player, part of the pitch is not, hey, Billy, if you play really good here, you'll be a first ballot Hall yeah. of Famer. Why not? Because that's not what? part of the pitch. You're not. You're telling me they Come wouldn't on. say to Aaron Rodgers, boy, I'll tell you something, Aaron. You win a Super Bowl here. Yeah. You go up a notch as an all-time great quarterback. You slay the impossible. No. You win a championship with the Jets. You're telling me they no. wouldn't say that to you, you think you have to, again, well, they a should. nine-year veteran and a 15-year veteran. They should or tell whatever them that. it is. You think you have to sit there at an Italian restaurant in Summer, New Jersey and go, you know what, Billy? You know what, Aaron? You know what, Derek? If you have five really great years here, you'll be a... F- no, they don't. You know what's funny about that? Because we're not talking to children. We're talking to grown men. You know what's funny about that? What? I know what was said. See, yeah. you don't know I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it. Go ahead. I know what was said to one Craig Carton at dinner two and a half years ago. You know, Craig, number one in afternoons along with number one in mornings, only Stern's done that. Yeah. And I know what your reaction was. You had a little smile on your face and said, that's cool. Sign me up. I'm in. So don't try me. Uh, that recruitment works on people wanted, that aren't children. I mean, I'll tell you exactly what I said. I'd rather do mornings again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. Damn you to hell. Well, I mean, they were pitching me on Bart Scott at the time, too. <laughs> your, name, your name hadn't quite come I up yet. I was like fifth on the list. I'm yeah. the Ryan Tannehill of the Jets. Yeah, meanwhile, I saw something and heard something earlier today. I'm debating getting into it on the air or not, uh, which is one of the most sad <laughs> and pathetic pieces of video slash audio uh, Evan, I've done this for more than 30 years. <laughs> I've been blessed to have a lot of success, especially right here in New York City on WFAM. And uh, there have been other places where I failed miserably, too. But I saw a about 30-second, 40-second uh, video today that is one of the most pathetic, sad, I mean, moments in my career. Hmm. I don't even know what I can compare it to. Uh, I saw the video of a beaten man today. A man who uh, I thought was making like a hostage video today. No, oh, really. And it's so sad and pathetic and uh, unprofessional that I'm not sure if I want to even air it for everybody. But I probably will. <laughs> probably right on 4 or 5 o'clock is what I'm thinking. As you get, begin your drives home, I will most likely play it and comment on it <laughs> because it's so bad. And it's just, it's, I saw the video of a tired, sad, beaten man today. And it's troubling to me that I may have had a role in that. And I get such tremendous joy out of that. Oh, so there's no compassion, it's just joy? No, I, I'm compassionate oh, about okay. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel, I almost want to call the man up and say, my bad. <laughs> I'm sorry that I, I, I had that impact on you uh, per- personally and professionally. But there's something going on right now that is so sad and pathetic. That I feel like I need to have a party. And yet you can't get that smile off. And I like I don't even know if I want to address it. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm going to have to. Well, now you have to. At some point, a little bit later on today. A little bit later <laughs> on today. <laughs> oh, it's so bad.
terrible. <laughs> boy, that smile on your face. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Wow. Anyhow, we'll get to that. We'll get all your calls as well. 877 uh, 337 6666. We got some baseball for you as well a little bit later on today. And I will ask the question again regarding Derek Carr. And I'm not sure if I remember your answer yesterday, Evan, so I'll give you a shot just to remind me because I, I apologize. I do forget exactly what you said about it. But if the Paul Schwartz uh, report I saw in the paper today or late yesterday. No. If I may. <laughs> if, I, if I may. All right, sir. go ahead. If that report is accurate, and I respect the fact that he's a very good beat reporter. What's his report against I'm going to give it to you right now. Okay. That the numbers that Danny Jones is going to wind up getting mm -hmm. are in the ballpark. He didn't give an exact, but are in the ballpark of five years, $190 million. Mm -hmm. that that's kind of where we're at. Give or take a couple on this way or that way, which is $38 million a year. He didn't write how much would be guaranteed, which is obviously the most important part of that. Sure. But that the Giants and Daniel Jones are in the neighborhood of five years, 190. If that is accurate, and I have no reason to think it's not accurate, my question would be, if the Giants are willing to do that for Daniel Jones, why wouldn't they do it for Derek Carr, who's better? Five-year commitment. I don't know the guarantee. Well, Maybe that's a big part of it. Well, well hold on. But why not I, consider can, everybody? May, may I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Because I'm curious now that you bring this up. Yeah. If Daniel Jones is going to get that contract, let's say he does. Okay. What makes you think Derek Carr yeah. wouldn't get significantly more? There's a if he market signed with for someone Derek else, Carr. He would. Well, yes, he will. Like well, Derek he, Carr has a market for him, right? We we kind of know no the market. doubt about that. Yes, at minimum we know two teams: yep. the New York Jets, the New Orleans Saints. There's a market You're for Derek Carr. Carolina. Stop it, go ahead. I'm okay. with you. And by, by the way, all those teams think they can win. They really do. The Jets think, "Wow, we're a quarterback away." Uh, the Carolina Panthers and New Orleans Saints think division's lousy. We're a quarterback away. If Derek Carr is going to watch Daniel Jones sign for that kind of money, yeah. you don't think his agent is smart enough to say, yeah, we're getting a lot more than right, that? Right, which is why you uh, trumpet if you're the Giants and you don't give Daniel Jones that kind of money. You offer that deal instead to Derek Carr, who I don't think anyone's going to debate is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones. Mm -hmm. All due respect to Danny having a really good year both on the ground and throwing the ball, not having as many turnovers that has plagued him. What I don't understand, while the New York Jets rightfully so are hot and heavy on Derek Carr, uh, if not Aaron Rodgers, the New York Giants don't have a legitimate proven franchise quarterback. He had a good year. He didn't have a great year. He had a good year. A good year that gives you promise that he might get better if you give him a better line, more weapons, et cetera, et cetera. But if I'm going to commit, and I don't know that it's accurate, but I believe Schwartz is a good reporter, in the neighborhood of a buck ninety, I'd rather spend that money on Derek Carr. That's a no, no brainer to me. Disagree. Really? Yeah. I'm fascinated because by that. Because I think if you're the Giants, you're spending money on Daniel Jones to continue to find out how much better he can be. He's also six years younger than Derek Carr. And if they're not going to invest the money in Daniel Jones, and I understand the argument of why you wouldn't, then start over at the position. You don't then reinvest even more money in a guy who's six years older. I wouldn't do that if I'm the Giants at all. I would. We'll get into it, though, because it's a worthy debate.